<laughs> Let's start with um, your tip, Johnny, is on Saturday, the 125, the Ladbrokes Dublin steeplechase. You're going for men. Yeah, I ultimately, ultimately what I'm saying is completely... There's hoots of derision from the crowd. Go on. <laughs> no, there was actually no derision, derision there was, whatsoever. Was, was. Ultimately, what I'm... <laughs> Ultimately, what I'm going to say here is absolutely irrelevant. Patrick is the man to ask about this. What's the story of Min, Patrick? Min's in great form. Dick Dowling, our head man, who rides him out every day. Um, delighted with him. He was very good in uh, punches on over two and a half miles where he was quite keen. So the question we're going to be asked, uh, the question we have to decide on is whether we take on Altior again in the champion chase um, or whether we step up to two and a half. He's a keen running horse. You know, would he just tire himself out in the in the Ryanair? I'm not so sure. Two but five as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's even that extra furlong. Which um, and it's on the the old course or the new course, which is a uh, more stamina. But I'd be interested to hear Davy's thoughts on what he thought of Altior the other day jumping out to his left. I mean, to me, a horse like Altior, who's ran 12 times defences, should be able to go down to a defence and jump straight. I didn't like him jumping left. Yeah, sure. I suppose. Look, he was out in front and he was lonely, and he's never he's not usually ridden from the front. So 12 runs of offences. Like oh, here, come here. I, look, it's not ideal. And He's not a novice. But would you believe the only time he ran around Ascot before he got beaten? Interesting. Yeah. Um, so I just... Ah. Is Alter not a horse, though, that has basically been winning so often that he's like, he knows what he's going to do. You're, you're trying His only to, motivation You're trying to give yourselves a reason to beat Alter, and I understand <laughs> yeah. that, and that's fine, but uh, there is none. <laughs> 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 well, just, just from the outside, you know, I... I and that's fine because you're, it's, they're yeah. your horses and yeah. I don't want to... Jesus, you can insult a man's wife but don't insult his horse. <laughs> <laughs> and no horse is unbeatable but Altiar looks, looks, looks a hell of a horse. No, to be fair, he does. and You know, it'll be very hard to, to beat him. Do you All reckon right. footpad's going to run? I don't know, sure. Look, um, Willie, everyone, like, I mean, no one believes how laid-back Willie is. Like, decorations have to be done by 10 o'clock and... I've seen Willie put in a horse at 5.10 and take it out at 2 minutes 10. He just, he, the way he works with his head is he puts himself under intense pressure that he has to make a decision at the last minute. Um, like he doesn't, most trainers have their decorations on by half nine. Willie doesn't even look at them until about quarter to 10. He has to come in from the first lot, sit down, decide where he's having marmalade or jam, um, <laughs> have his toast. And like if, if Min is lame, like it can wait till he's finished his toast. Um, breakfast is just the most important meal of the day for the man. And... Myself, David Casey and Ruby are pulling our hair out. It's like, you know, we've, we've 56 horses entered here tomorrow, Willie, and um, we could really do with some, some help. I think uh, at the moment, Min is 5-2. to two. Um, I would strongly suggest, just from the vibes I'm getting from the man beside me, should back Min at 5-2. to two. We could go off an awful lot short on that. All right, just a reminder that we do have a 100 euro charity bet for the Irish Inter Jockeys Fund, courtesy of the tote to put on the Dublin Racing Festival. Our winnings to date stand at 1,485 euros, stubbornly. Is that That's each? Here. <laughs> Is that 100? 100, 100? Not for one, we're going to go for Min at 5 to 2. Would Tote not kind of cop themselves on a small bit and get on? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a representative from Tote here? Is there? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to shine a spotlight into the crowd, but we might have. <laughs> Give us 100 euros each, surely. <laughs> look, look, if Footpad turns up here, I'd be on Footpad's side. Um, and I think you've got to follow, follow Footpad wherever he goes because I think he'll definitely improve on that run at Christmas. He's beaten by Simply Ned. did everything right, but I think he will improve uh, for that run. And I think that we got the sense from Patrick spoke to us on Friday Night Racing that the horses will improve as they go on through the season. So Footpad, I don't know what the ground is going to be like for the Dublin Racing Festival. Obviously, it's been better ground than we've expected. It's usually softer ground. But Footpad generally goes on any ground. He's a brilliant jumper. I think he's definitely an improver. So whether he turns up with this or not, I think Footpad is a horse you've got to be on the right side of. If he turns up on the day, I'll be backing him. Okay, what, what would Footpad be? Well, uh, is, at, at the moment, I don't know what Johnny, you know. but Five um, to four, I think, maybe? Yeah, even money. Like, look, an even money winner is about a 100 to one loser, folks. Um, you know, so uh, value is all about, is the thing going to win or not? And uh, I think Footpad is a horse to be on the right side of. All right, then, just a reminder, you can join Tote at the Dublin Racing Festival. See the Tote.com for more. Kev, you got a couple of tips for us? Is there any on the Saturday? Yeah, one on Saturday, yeah. Um, I'm in the two o'clock on Saturday. Yeah. Um, this is the Frank Ward solicitor's Arkel Nava steeplechase. Yeah, this Paloma Blue. Yeah, it's one over course and distance. Um, the man, three three to my left as well. He's he's ridden him out as well. And um, Henri de Bromed. And he's, um, yeah, I fancy him. I fancy Paloma Blue. In I, the, I, I hate the way he jumps. Why I, I just, for, for a horse of Henry de Bromed's... Uh, 
I, I've been so disp- I don't know how he won at Christmas the way he jumped. He's, he's jumping at Navin was atrocious. He was just like a guy that was afraid of his fences. Um, but funnily enough, Brian Cooper, he's tipping him up big time for the JLT at Cheltenham. He's like, he'd be more at ease yeah. over. I just, I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't know the price. I don't, I don't know what price it'll be, but that's me one. That's, that's certainly one for the Saturday. Anyway. Were, were you yeah. surprised at him, David, just the way he's, for a horse of his kind of, I suppose, his background, that his jumping has just been, for a Henry de Bromhead horse, been very, very deliberate? I think he get better as he goes on. I'd say mm. he's that type of horse. I, I wouldn't be. I, I agree with you visually to look at it. He didn't look good. I haven't. I, I, I've schooled him. And did and you school more fences? Yeah, yeah. How um, was he? Uh, geez, he was. He was. He was good this morning. Now he was. Now very good this morning. So I wouldn't be overly worried. But I do know where you're coming from visually. He didn't look brilliant, but uh, he's definitely getting better. So Rachel, do you know if you're going to have a ride in this race yet? Uh, no. I'm just going to sit in the chair here and <laughs> not get involved, I think. <laughs> What's Paloma Blue like? I obviously would have seen them up close. Um, yeah, look, I, I can't tell you any more than, than what Davey can tell you. Um, I, I just know he's, he's going to improve a lot. And, you know, Henry focuses a lot on his jumping and he knows that that wasn't fully up to scratch the last day. And you can be sure he won't leave any stone unturned there, you know. OK, so... Uh, Anybody opposing Paloma Blue in this race? There's, there's Johnny, not, Johnny is no, the first uh, guy uh, jumping. Not necessarily. Like Mingley can, obviously. I, I thought he was. Again, Davy wrote him uh, on his chase debut. He was absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, I backed um, him that day as well. Yeah, I, back him there. I, I, I just thought he was desperately disappointed. There's an interesting horse in the race. Right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Some breaking news from the uh, good people at the Toast. Oh, da- yeah. Davy asks and they answer. They've given us a hundred euro each for all of you. Not for them. Okay, so. Finally, we're going to get off this uh, 1,485 euros that we've been stuck on. <laughs> Johnny, not looking at you. Okay, so uh, is Paloma Blue yours? Um, yeah, go on. Pl- uh, Paloma Blue, yeah, on the Saturday, yeah. Please. Okay, okay. so Kevin Caban is going for Paloma Blue on the Saturday. Yeah, You're sticking I, with Min, because that's I'll it. I'll go with yeah. Min, yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, w- okay, well, do you want to pick? We'll, let's pick our, our 100 euro bet each then, and we can go back and talk about any of the races that don't get a mention. Dave, you got anything in particular that you think? Uh, I thought maybe a horse there called Midnight Stroll of Robin Tyner's um, in hand in the in the in the he's in the three forty five. Yeah, his horses are flying to three forty five on Sunday, and we'll go for fifty euros each way. Sorry, I missed that bit. He was talking in my ear. Say that last bit again. Oh, sorry. Midnight Stroll, fifty euros each way in the three forty five on Saturday. On Saturday, the three forty five on Saturday. Midnight Stroll. Johnny, you like this? Yeah, I'd, the Tyner horse are an unbelievable form. He's um, he's a typical Cork man. Like he's he's just it's it's very hard to get sound, any. Imp- sound, no, no, sound. no, no, no. <laughs> like Cor- what was the line there that came up recently on Twitter? Like a Kerry man versus a Cork man. A Kerry man goes like the Cork man is the lad who'll go into the revolving door behind you, but somehow he'll not be out in front when you actually get to the, the end of the door. That's like Cork lads will tell you they have so many versions of telling you something, and at the end you're like. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. Like, is he telling me the truth at all? Robert Tyner is—he's just the sharpest, shrewdest guy going. Like, and no, no wonder that this man has had success for him as well. Um, his horses are in unbelievable form at the moment. Okay, all right. But he's from Cork. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick, what do, you, what do you fancy over the two days? Uh, I'm quite sweet on a juvenile of ours, which wouldn't be normal for me. But um, Tiger Tap Tap runs on the Sunday in the Grade One juvenile hurdle. He was only second at Christmas and got beaten by Sir Eric, one of Joseph's horses, but our horse hadn't been out on grass, and Ruby thought he was quite green. I thought a few of our horses need the run, and I thought he did very well to get it close. He did to, to um, Sir Eric. Sir Eric, and I think he'll improve past him. And I think if he improves past him, um, that's good enough. Um, and you'll be getting an each way price on him as well. And no, I wouldn't be like Davy a coward. No, I'll go all on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. And he, he's by a great stallion in jukebox jewelry too. Okay, I'd say if you couldn't make a fault from it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is like myself. <laughs> Tiger Tap Tap on Sunday. That's the one fifteen at Leperstown. Uh, Johnny, we've got yours. Rachel, have you got a, a pick for us? Um, I know Petit Mouchoir is going to improve a lot from his run the last day in Leperstown, and he'd be a, a fifty euro each way bet as well. I'd say. Okay, so which in race the, is that? In the BHP Irish Champion Hurdle. Okay, that's on Saturday. Enough, what race is the, that? The BHP Irish Champion Hurdle. Mm. Do you know one about BHP? Ten, <laughs> ten past might, three. They might sponsor What company it. is that? <laughs> yeah. Who, who, the BHP yeah. Irish Champion Hurdle? There are so many subtle uh, hints about Brian Hayes, the BHP. <laughs> Always be closing, I believe that is. Uh, John, what have you got for us? Uh, if Footpath turns up, he wins. 125. 
on the Saturday. Um, that's my charity bet. If he doesn't turn up, there's a, there's a race. I think, yeah, I think Patrick said there that race, Sir Eric would. I thought that was a good race at Christmas because I saw it nearly every bloody one of them, uh, which is obviously the point. Um, Castleball West, I don't know where he's going to run, but I think he was a horse that uh, was in a good ding dong battle with the big dog, and the big dog won today. I think the form has worked out. They were well clear of the remainder. I don't know, Patrick, yes. where he'll go, but I think he's a horse to follow. Would you agree? Yeah, he's he's improving all the time. Uh, I don't know where he I don't know where he go. He's into two six uh, grade one, I think, and he does look a stare. Um, he, so he's improving away. I managed to get him beaten. I have to ask you about that because Patrick went around like the tour of like the, the tour of Ireland basically that day, and people were like, I think Matt Chapman again. He was like, second horse should have won, and I was like, well, Patrick legitimately looked for the better grounds. Yeah, I think I should have won the race, but not because I, w I went wide for nicer ground, which it was. And um, but laid your uh, challenge too long. Um, yeah, it was his first time over hurdles, and I rode him to get over the second last, and then race. Um, which, when a horse first time out, makes sense, but it's too short a run in Clamel to do it. Um, so it was just it was experience. I won't make that mistake again. What did WP say when you came back in? Uh, he didn't say anything actually, and that's <laughs> oh. that's when you know you're in trouble <laughs> when he doesn't say anything. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. When you said that you could uh, hear Matt Chapman uh, saying that uh, Duvan was drifting like a barge, is that because the TV is on in the weigh room, or you mm. could actually right? No, it's on in the weigh room. All right. And does nobody think to turn the thing down, just like, <laughs> know, yeah, or yeah. is it like psyching each other out, going, oh? Or would you be have more sense maybe than listen to it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think psychologically that's interesting because the, the horse did drift partly because it was an amateur riding him in the champion chase. That's but not Ruby Walsh. Yeah, well, whether you like it or not, like it was Ruby Walsh to Patrick Mullins. And yeah. I had a right good bet on him because it was like, Patrick's riding him, but that doesn't mean he should be six to one. Like this horse, apparently, you know, his work is fine. Um, and, you know, obviously he lost, but I was like, for much of that race, I was very happy. It, was, it wasn't like Patrick was that much of a handicap because like he's well able to ride. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like two to one out to six to one. He'll come like on the show again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Patrick's been one of our more regular guests, <laughs> and it's all over now. <laughs> Do you have another tip for us, uh, Kevin? No, I got one. Yeah, on, on the Sunday, the three o'clock on Sunday, uh, bottom horse uh, Libaga Roy, uh, which is um, Warren, Warren Gretchen, yeah. whose Great horses number. are absolutely yeah, so yeah. left, right, and centre at the minute, actually. Yeah, 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 just just a, a little a little one for Sunday, yeah, a little one for Sunday. Yeah. Okay, yeah. She won the um, she won the uh, novice chase at Campton at Christmas. It was a great race. To win in in Newbury as well, she's good filly by that one. She's yeah. great jumping, well held in thirds. Yeah, hell of, hell of her own. Let's just go into a bit of detail about two more races and then we'll wrap this up. So um, the BHP Insurance Irish Champion Hurdle. We've already had a tip. BHP, BHP is company, for they? Petit Mouchoir. Yeah. What, what do they do? <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, Rachel, you might want to talk about BHP. So look, this this is a race that. Obviously, uh, people are going to recognise the names. Faheen, Mellon, Petit Mouchoir, Sam Crow, Sharjah, Super Sunday, Tombstone, Far Class, Salier, Apple Jade, Lorena, and... Uh, well, Apple Jade goes here, which is the really the interesting one, isn't it? She's the lay of the festival for me. How come? Um, she jumps right. She's not going to get away with it over two miles. Uh, I will... Subject to me emigrating in a couple of weeks, I will lay her uh, in the smoking area. Um, I will lay <laughs> Apple Jade. I think she's, I, again, and, and play for a bit of smoke. <laughs> again, again, I'm interested in your view on what's going to run from the Mullins camp. Though. Yeah. Lorena won't. Um, possibly not. Uh, Steve Zemmer won't, won't run. He ran offence today. Faheen, it's day by day. He was very stiff and sore after Christmas. He was very lucky. He was very, very lucky. Um, so he's, he's back riding and he, he's riding away, but... We haven't uh, pushed any buttons yet. Melon will turn up here. He, he will strip a lot fitter. Um, it's funny how sometimes when you see a horse home, you think they look fit, and then you bring him to the races, and you see them with a racing saddle and a normal cloth on. And I looked at him in the parade ring, and I thought, the size of him. Um, and <laughs> he's after getting some hard work at home now. Um, That's hugely significant information. That horse is 4 to 1, 5 to 1 each way, and he's not going to be out of the tree. Like. He's, he, he's going to strip a lot fitter, a bit like... Rachel said about Patima Shwar. Sharjah could come here, um, but Willie did say he might go to straight to Cheltenham, so not quite sure. And Lorena, I don't know. How good is Lorena? No one knows. But you can't say that. You <laughs> cannot say it. The like, work rider has a fair idea. 
yeah, Rage of Robin, right? Or, but like, yeah, like I've seen Ruby ride horse up the gallop and say this is a machine, and then they're no good. So like, it, that, it doesn't quite add up all the time. But her work at home is very good. The thing about her is she stands out. When you see her, if you see, if you can see her in the flesh, she's an absolute beast. I mean, she makes any power look small. Lanny was a big mare. Um, you would, you would pick her out in the string. Um, like, look, all she's done is beaten novice mares. So you see the difference between Samcro beating novices going up to stepping up against the big boys. Um, so she's only beaten novice mares, so she has to step up hugely. Could she? Yes. Can you say she definitely will? No. So I'm as interested as anyone else to see how good she is. There, there are 12 runners in this race at the moment, and if you back Melon each way, you'll rock up in the day with the three each way places on a horse that'll be challenging, I think, Apple Jade for favours, or certainly thereabouts. Okay, so that makes sense from this point. Are you going to swap your in bet then, no? Um, I, I think it's right up there with Min, Min and, and each way double on Min and Melon. Can't nice. go wrong. No, actually, don't let Johnny back her Melon as well. Do you want to lay me Min and Melon? That's the tip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then the other thing we've got to talk about really in, in some detail here is the Unibel Irish Gold Cup goes to post at 3.35 on the Sunday. And again, this is a, an outstanding field of entries at the moment. Um, we hope that loads of these stand their ground. Johnny, what do you like here? Uh, we talked about Presenter Percy, he's not going to run. Um, and in fairness to connections. Don't really out, John. Hmm? Don't really out. He's absolutely no chance of running um, in this race. Um, Davey might, might have been vaguely diplomatic, but no, he won't run in this, and he'll go back to Gorn. Um, I'm a massive fan of Road to Respect. Um, I think race tactics the last day were very, very critical to the victory of uh, Kenboy. And uh, I think Road to Respect is slightly under heralded. He's, uh, again, he's another, geez, this each way treble is going to be quite remarkable by the end of the night. <laughs> You've Road to Respect, Min and Melon each way. Road to Respect was very, very unlucky in the race at Christmas. He was, he lost so much ground twice in that, like, uh, basically his, his run was, his momentum was completely checked. And the goods he showed to nearly finish second. Um, he, I can't but see him be in the first three and run a big, big race. And he's my idea of the Gold Cup winner if presenting Percy doesn't do it. But uh, I, I think he's a great each way better okay so that's a uh, road to respect what do you say in a hypothetical situation where presenting Percy didn't make this race what else do you like oh it's a hell of a good race um obviously album fort has uh farmers frank to, uh, usually today with uh invitation only so that uh, and obviously uh presenting Percy so he's a high class horse um just again uh, rachel tell you more about him but bulk of the flow uh, he is in some order um, he ran a big ra race, uh, had a great run in this last year, this race last year, so uh, I wouldn't rule him out if the ground was dry. Um, and again, you're not quite sure it's going to turn up. Um, and um, um, you would have to say that, that, that visually looking at the race, the last day, Rose Respect did look unlucky, but really at the end of the day, Kemboy has a lot of ones behind his name, and um, I would you'd have to kind of stand and look at it. And uh, he's a very talented horse. Um, he got it all right. He put it all together at at the top end the last day. And to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me if he improved again for that experience. So I I think Kemboy would probably will be favourite and will justify it. But it wouldn't surprise me if Album Photo or the likes of Balco de Flo would get a little bit closer to him. Um, when you are on a horse that's won over. <coughs> course and distance do you notice the horse feels more comfortable in the race is that what it is or what yeah i think once a horse has a pleasant experience of a of, of a race course i've often stood in the yard in cheltenham and watched horses come down off the lorry that had been there before and you could nearly see it on their face to be begging you can you please put me back in the lorry i don't like this place <laughs> And you can see horses coming down off the lorry in Cheltenham, or different, uh, no, I wouldn't see them as much in the race course in Ireland because we'd be coming, but in Cheltenham you get to see them because we're in the yard. And they'd grow a hand, you know what I mean? They'd grow an inch um, when they see where they are, if you know what I mean. So I would, it definitely does have a factor to play course and distance. It makes think, sense. It's it? a huge, I think it's a huge, um, it's a huge, um, part to play in a horse um if a horse has a bad experience in the track Come here, is there question. is there a possibility that horses like don't have a great experience but actually get used to something the other uh, maybe uh, they, do, they do definitely uh, again you see it all it all it all has its own thing there Each may be reason individual at the end of the yeah, day there may be reason like look um, um so you don't ride off a horse just because it has one bad experience no, in the track no no it has to be a consistent flow like if a horse 
Some some horses some horses do, but it's like a fella getting a, a smack in a, a hurling match. Like yeah, you know, some some fellas lie down, some lads get up. Um, yeah. But every horse is different. They they, they have different personalities. Some horses don't mind getting get knocked like a back up and win the next time out. Or some horses might take them. Kevin will tell you there about marking lads in a match. Mm. Like to some, I'd imagine you. I wasn't a great marker. No, but <laughs> but I'd imagine you'd go to a game and and you would say, oh Jesus, not him again. He's going to stand on my toes. He's going to pull me short. He's going to pinch me under the arm. Like I'm not Fabregas. Just, just not Kevin, uh, Kevin Muscat. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not just this, you know, and then you go into your shell or you go to another game and you say, that bastard got me the last day. He's not going to do it yeah, again yeah. today. Do you know, and you raise your game. Yeah, so yeah. It's all a... 100%, look, that's what you do, isn't it? That's exactly what it is, yeah. And it's all about mentality and horses do have a brain, do you know, so, and some horses, when they get to a certain stage, they either improve or disimprove or stay the same or... You know, they may be carrying an injury before and they may have begun or they may have been lacked a run or something. How much as a jockey can you influence that or how much of that do you need to yeah, feed that's your and job. know about? That's your job. That's your job as, as David Mullins showed in that race at Christmas time. Would you um, have done that actually? Would you have done what he did? Um, look, I suppose circumstances change. Um, we were going very slow and, and, and he was riding a horse that seemed to be, that, that, that it suited, but I suppose, like... If you were riding for Jigginson, would that be different doing that for David, who's kind of having, he's, he's on almost a spare for Willie Mullins here? Yeah, but look, that's what makes different riders good or bad or make them decisions, do you know what I mean? Like, if David Mullins done that and he finished last, he'd have to go in face to owners, or, or more so Willie, because he's owned by a syndicate. Well, you know what, if you know what I mean, and he'd have to go in and Willie, I'd imagine, would say, you know, you probably made a bad decision there, but... Lucky enough, he's riding for Willie, who understands these situations, I'd imagine. Willie well, said at the time, he's, or afterwards, he's like, I was thinking at the time, what am I going to actually say to him? I'm going to give him a bollocking after racing. We don't uh, appreciate this. Well, as he said, anyway, we don't appreciate did, this did, enough yeah. in racing that a lad makes a mid-race move like that to win a, an Irish Gold Cup. And well, he, was, he was faced with very easy choices. The, place, the, the pace slowed up, and his horse started to get keen. And he right. was a keen horse, so his choice you was, hold on to do goal. I sit against him and fight him in a three-mile race and fight for the next mile and a half and use up all my energy and, that? And plus, you're running around the bend down to that fence away from the stands i would much prefer to be going down to that fence relaxed than keen so he felt that but it was, well, a, harder thing, it was a harder thing to do i mean most lads would yeah. just sit against them because would, then you don't course, look yeah. stupid you don't make the mid-race move you don't look stupid it doesn't work out you just you sit there you come back and say the horse is keen you got bet and david uh, he has this bit of a devil may care attitude and it works against him sometimes it works for right. other times and it's a bit like Paul Carby, like you just, and that's, you that's take the, the product when it works, and you game must game take the yeah. criticism yeah. when it doesn't, so. Um, and that's what separates maybe a good rider, again, relate to other sports, to simplify their golfers or anything, you know, that's what separates them. The lad that's going to drive a ball out over the lake, or the fella that's going to drop short and take the safe route in. It's like Zidane off having the audacity to take the times. ball off the bar in a, in a, in a, in a final, um, in, off a penalty, and just say, yeah, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And then yeah. headbutt a fella. Exactly. <laughs> but that was, that was 99 times out of, out of 100, the ball will land in the water. And the one time it lands on the green and you win the Open, then you're a hero. Yeah. And if they forget about the 99 times you dropped it in the water. And, and it was worth it. It, it, was, was, ab it was absolutely yeah. worth it. Sure. Uh, okay, so, John, what do you like in the Gold Cup here? Um, I like Camboy because it's all about N K O T B, new kids on the block. Um, so, does anyone remember them? <laughs> Who are they? I'll take that, fans in the audience here. Um, <laughs> so, Plan des Obos won the King George, one of the biggest races of the season in, uh, in Steeplechase. You know, Campton, six year old, Camboy, six year old. Um, and I think it's about improvers. Uh, that's the way I'm looking at the kind of the Gold Cup market for, for both this and for and for later in the season. So I think Album Photo has got jumping issues at times. Road to respect, you can't disagree with what Johnny's saying. He has won a, a Lexus, as they call it. I think it's a Savile's chase now. Um, so he likes course and distance. Um, Mona Lee, I like as a consistent horse, but always tends to find one too good. Annabelle Fly, not so sure if he needs a few more pounds to be a graded horse. Waiting, pat waiting patiently, he's never won over three miles, even when he comes over from uh, the UK. So, Kenboy, uh, I like the way he finished his race last time. I think he's an improver, and I'm with Davy as well. But I think Davy is, is spot on about Balco de Flo as a horse I really thought was impressive at, uh, in last season's uh, Chapman Festival. Um, he's run well at Leperstown before, and I think Balco de Flo, once again, Henry de Bromhead is a great trainer of chasers and getting them to jump. So, I think um, Rachel might back me up on that one. 
Yeah, I'd uh, love to be able to get the same tune out of Balco as Davy did. Um, he didn't run, didn't run well over Christmas, so he'll need to, you know, need to come on from that. So, uh, um, but he's, you know, w well capable of doing so. Lads, great stuff. Thanks very much to everybody involved here. My thanks to everybody involved in putting this show together. I want to uh, particularly thank our guests tonight, Patrick Mullins, Rachel Blackmore, Davey Russell, Nikki English, Emma Doyle, my co-hosts Kev, Johnny Ward and John Duggan, the Sugar Club for hosting us. A particular thanks to everybody at HRI and uh, Barbara White for helping us put this together, to everybody on our team for putting this together as well, to uh, Sue and to... JP and to JP never puts his own name on the uh, but that's JP everybody over there you can give him a big round of applause to Louise and to the guys on sound as well but we can't do this show without the people who show up so give yourselves the biggest round of applause tonight come on you've been such a lovely audience and one last thing remember to get your tickets for the Dublin Racing Festival at leopardstown.com good night thanks very much Come on, Debbie. Thanks a million.